What I want to do in this one is talk about the MELD score, or the model for end-stage liver disease, its background, how to calculate it, exceptions, and what it can be used for. The MELD score was first developed as a tool to predict three-month post-tip survival in cirrhotic patients. However, while the original aim of the MELD score was very specific, it was found that it's a very effective tool to predict three-month mortality in patients with cirrhotic liver disease in general, and is now much more broadly used than its original intent. The MELD score is very easy to obtain, and only requires a patient's serum bilirubin level, serum creatinine, and INR time to predict survival. The official formula is the following. Your MELD score is equal to 3.8 times the natural log of your serum bilirubin, and that's in milligrams per deciliter, plus 11.2 times the natural log of your INR time, plus 9.6 times the natural log of the serum creatinine level, and that's also in milligrams per deciliter, plus 6.4. If you don't like using a calculator, there are a ton of calculators online that you can find and use. Now, the MELT score has been altered since when it was first created, and there are now a few caveats to the above equation. If any of the inputs, so bilirubin, creatinine, uh, INR, are less than 1, then you should use 1 instead of the actual value. Previously, the MELD equation would turn up negative numbers, which was confusing for some people, uh, which is why they made this change to better define a score range. Similarly, if the creatinine level is above 4, then use 4 instead of the actual number for the creatinine. This helps to confine the score range on a higher side. Lastly, if the patient is on active dialysis, meaning high dialysis twice in the last seven days, use a creatinine value of 4 for the equation instead of the patient's actual creatinine level. The above equation will spit out a score between 6 and 40, with a higher score associated with higher mortality in the next three months. The stratification between MELD score and three-month mortality for hospitalized patients is as seen here. So MELD score under 9 is associated with a 1.9% mortality in the next three months a score between 10 and 19, a 6% mortality, and so on and so forth. And remember, this is all expected mortality in the next three months only. Now, there are some situations in which the MELD score isn't completely accurate, and those conditions include hepatocellular carcinoma, hepatopulmonary syndrome, and some other systemic metabolic diseases associated with chronic liver disease. The biggest one to remember, however, is HCC, and additional MELD points might need to be added to correctly predict mortality. The equation I just went over is a more updated version of the MELD score, and it's also the one that is used to allocate livers for liver transplants, which is why it's so important. An individual's priority for liver transplant depends on a MELD score along with a couple other factors, which is part of the reason why it's a nationally standardized and often used score. Those with a higher MELD score usually have a higher priority than those with a lower MELD score, and the reason for this is based on data. If you look at the one-year survival rates of patients on the waiting list versus the one-year survival rates of patients post-transplant, stratified by MELD score, you'll see this. So what this is telling us is that for those patients with low MELD scores, for example, a score of 10, the survival rates of patients on a waiting list, or 90%, is better than that of a patient who did get transplant, which is 83%. On the flip side, for patients with high MELD scores, such as a score of 30, you see that patients on the waiting list have a very poor survival, or 21%, compared to those who do get a transplant, which is 71%. This is why the MELD score is used to help allocate liver transplants, because for those with high MELD scores, their survival rates are very low if they didn't get a transplant in comparison to patients who do get a transplant. The transition point 
where transplantation has a higher one-year survival than the waiting list, is about a MELT score of 15. Lastly, while the most prominent role of the MELT score is for use in liver transplantation prioritization, the MELT score has uses in a variety of other settings. These include alcoholic hepatitis, hepatorenal syndrome, fulminant hepatic failure, sepsis and sporadics, acute variceal hemorrhage, surgical procedures in chronic liver disease, and of course, cirrhotic patients undergoing TIP procedure. Now, that's it for this one. Here are take-home points. Number one, the MELT score predicts three-month mortality in patients with chronic liver disease. Number two, the equation is as follows. Number three, the score ranges between 6 to 40, with higher scores indicating higher mortality. And lastly, the MELT score is used as one of the factors to prioritize patients for liver transplantation. A score around 15 to 20 is when you might want to first start considering a liver transplantation. And our sources are also listed here. Thank you for watching.